Hello and welcome to Mainly Menswear. My name is Dwayne McLeod and I'm glad you're here. Today's video is about using this product which is called Band Roll and it's used in trouser waistbands. And this product has been a complete game changer uh, for my trouser making. It is a little bit more complex than using a fusible interfacing but I think that you will be so pleased with the result that you will never go back to using a fusible interfacing on a pair of trousers ever again. It's quite a long video. Please bear with me. Um, and so without further ado, let's just get into it. Before we launch into the waistband on the Jedediah pants, I thought I would just catch you up to uh, what's happened uh, since the last video. Um, after putting in the zipper, the next step is to add the binding, um, which is optional, but it's a nice touch on these pants. And a really easy way to, uh, to put this binding on is with these little wonder clips. And they work really well um, holding the bias binding in place uh, while you edge stitch it in place. It's just a little thing that I've learned and they do make it much easier. Um, down at the hem, the, the hem of the Jedediah pant is three quarters of an inch turned up twice. You're going to want to uh, end your bias binding two inches from the bottom of the pant. That way you won't have a lot of bulk um, in the seam here and and uh, you'll find that the edge of your binding will tuck very nicely into the hem and you get a nice clean finish here. Um, if you go too far you're going to want to unpick that and trim it back and nobody's got time for that. So just end your bias binding two inches from the bottom of the pant. Uh, after binding the edges, I went ahead and did the flat fell seam on the inseams. And there are excellent instructions um, that come with this pattern on how to make a flat fell seam. And you will find that it's very easy uh, to do this um, with all of the pieces flat. You're going to get a really great looking uh, flat fell seam here. This is the little um, the little line of stitching we did at the crotch prior to putting in the zipper. Um, you might not have enough room here. You might have to unpick this just a little bit. Don't worry about that because when the uh, back seam is sewn, um, it will connect here and every, everything will be uh, put together. So if you need to unpick that just a little bit to get um, the flat fill seam in, uh, into your machine uh, that's perfectly okay. All that remains uh, before putting on the waistband is to close up the back seam. And here's a little trick to make that easier. You will want to turn one of the pant legs inside out and you are going to drop the other pant leg down inside. And when you do this, you will find that that back seam will line up very nicely, right sides together. And this is very easy to stitch this back seam uh, in this position. Once that seam is made, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, do a bias binding along here so that I have a nice clean finish um, uh, up the back side of my uh, trousers. And then everything will be ready and we will get started on putting the waistband on these bad boys. This is the pattern piece for the Jedediah pants. 
there's a lot of information on here. There's many notches for where the belt loops go, where side seams go, where the back seam goes. It's all very complicated. And as much as I appreciate all the work that goes into creating a pattern like this, I think you're better off just forgetting about this pattern piece altogether and just making your own uh, waistband. So let's get rid of that. What I do is just get out your tape measure and you are going to make four measurements. And what I would do is I would measure uh, from the front of the fly to the side seam and write down that measurement. Then go from side seam to back center seam and, and write down that measurement and work your way around in quarters around your pant and then just add it all up to get the final measurement for your waistband. In my case, it's 37 and a half inches. So the pattern piece for the Jedediah pant is four and three eighths wide. I would go ahead and make the waistband four and a half inches wide and then just add some extra to the measurement that you've come up with. In my case, I was at 37 and a half. I'll probably cut my waistband to be 39. And I will also cut a piece of band roll interfacing, which is this kind of crispy web stuff, uh, the same length. So let me go ahead and get those cut out and I will be right back. After your waistband is cut out, you are gonna to wanna to use your bias binding and uh, bind one of the edges of your waistband. This is will eventually be inside the pant. It will give a really nice clean finish. And on the back side of your waistband, on the side opposite of your basting, you are going to want to make a mark five eighths of an inch up from the edge. And it's along this edge that you're going to place the band roll interfacing and it will need to be basted into place. And you are most likely going to want to wear a thimble while you do this because the band roll is, is quite stiff. And so you will just baste, baste your band roll on and then we will take it to the sewing machine and temporarily uh, sew it in place. So I will continue to baste this and I'll come back after I have taken it to the sewing machine. Once your band roll interfacing is basted on, you will want to take it to your sewing machine and have the stitch length as long as your machine will allow and stitch one quarter inch away from the edge of the interfacing. And this is just temporary machine basting. It will be removed in the end. So you will be doing yourself a big favor if you do it in a contrasting thread so that it will be easier to see. In the next step, we'll move on to the belt loops. Before the waistband is actually sewn on, the belt loops need to be basted into position. And the Jedediah pant pattern as written calls for five belt loops. And I have found that I would prefer to have seven. So I just thought that I would uh, describe uh, exactly where I, where I place them. I do it based on uh, Roberto Cabrera's uh, menswear tailoring book that's uh, sort of my go-to tailoring resource. And he is very specific about everything, but he's also very specific about the placement of the belt loops. So I, using his information, um, I place belt loops at the front that are two and a half inches away from the center front. So, um, the center front is the 
edge of the fly. So uh, there are belt loops two and a half inches either side. Uh, there are also belt loops at the side seam, centered over the side seam. There is a belt loop at the center back. And then there are belt loops that are centered between the center back and the side seam for a total of seven belt loops. And I find that this holds up the trousers much better than the five that are called for. So they just have to be basted into position. Then it's a matter of actually attaching the waistband. All right, we're finally ready to attach the waistband to the trouser. Um, I think you can see here's our band roll. And we're starting at the very edge of the fly. And you want your band roll to be very close to that edge. Like So if you fold this back, your band roll is right in there. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sewing right along the very edge of the band roll without catching it. Um, so we'll start with maybe a little back tack. And then very slowly work along making sure that we're as close to the band roll as we can get without hitting it. And you're going to want to use your hand wheel to get past the zipper here because you don't want to break a needle. So I'm just very carefully using the hand wheel to get past the zipper here. And we will continue to very slowly attach the waistband. And there will be lots of places as I work along where I, I call it sort of uh, going against the tide. There are going to be um, some seam allowances that are going to be facing in this direction and you want to make sure um, that they stay in that direction and that your feed dog doesn't push it backwards because you'll just end up having to rip that out and it can be really frustrating. So this is just one of those cases where uh, slower is better. So we'll get this attached and I'll be back. I will admit that I have never had any success with step 40 in the Jedediah pant directions. Um, this little illustration here, this is um, finishing off the ends of the uh, waistband. What I do instead, I I fold the waistband back on itself um, so that the uh, band roll interfacing is right at the top edge and the right sides are together and then I just stitch down in the same line as the zipper fly or the fly shield. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch that now, uh, turn it and I'll show you how I finish off the inside. I stitched and trimmed that seam and then turned it and on the inside of the pant you can just tuck the extra bit up inside as you pull the waistband back over the top of the band roll and I place this on my ham and I and I press here and I will work my way across the pant pulling the fabric up over the band roll and then pressing it into position. Give it a little steam every once in a while. After that I will baste this in place. We'll turn the waistband over and stitch in the ditch here to finally secure the waistband. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll 
continue pressing, I'll baste, and then we'll stitch in the ditch. You will have trimmed out a lot in this seam, but I do the final baste um, on my Taylor's ham. Uh, you're gonna want to wear a thimble for this. There are a lot of layers to go through, but what we're hoping for here is that when you stitch from the outside, there won't be any little catches or pleats on the inside. It'll be completely smooth. And you will sense that we're gonna end up with like a little, with a little curtain here, which just finishes off the inside of these jeds beautifully. So I'm gonna go ahead, I, I'll complete this final basting and we'll uh, stitch from the outside to complete uh, the waistband. Waistband has been stitched from the outside right along here. It's imperceptible. You will just want to be very careful right around the po points where the zipper is. You don't want to break a needle. Uh, everything is beautifully finished inside. There's a little curtain effect. There are no raw edges anywhere. Um, you can take out this temporary basting now. All that really remains is finishing off the uh, belt loops and uh, hemming them. I hope that this has been helpful, that uh, you might be encouraged to use band roll interfacing. I just think it gives like a superior waistband. It feels like a really quality pair of trousers. And again, it's just a way that you can elevate the quality of your makes. I know this has been a long video, um, so I, I wish you all happy sewing, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.